in this video, we're gonna build on what you learned by making uh, light pockets, and we're gonna use some printable textures from the Torino Tech and Torches manual to make a bar with lantern sitting on top. So let's get started. So we're going to start off by marking out the exterior pieces for a three square wide wall. And you'll see here I'm using what looked kind of like the Taverns and Towns wall template, but it's a little different. And this is because this is the old template from the version one of Trano, but the there's a comparable one in the uh, the new Trano uh, Taverns and Towns manual that uh, will do the job just as well. So grab that one instead. And after we've gotten that opening traced onto the two exterior pieces, we are going to glue one of those exterior pieces to an interior piece. Before we start cutting it out, we're actually going to add a sliver to the bottom of that hole. This is going to make the hole big enough to also have the, the, the horizontal part of the bar, the actual bar top, be able to pass through and still be at the height of that uh, window area. So then it's just time to cut out. Now we're cutting out the exterior piece and we're cutting through the tongue piece in the middle too. Um, so you want to use a sharp blade for this. Do as many cuts of this as you need to uh, get through it. Don't worry about doing it all in one cut because uh, that could tear the foam. And then it's time to add the textures from the Trano Tech and Torches manual. Uh, so make sure you've printed those out. This is the bar top, and we'll be applying that first. So we're gonna glue this on there, and we're gonna let that sit a little bit to dry before we, we play with it further. So while that's drying, I'm going to start on the cartridges and the LEDs for our little lanterns. Uh, it's always good to test your LEDs in, in the beginning to make sure they work. And also throughout the build, you'll see me testing them a lot. Um, I haven't had one go bad, but when you're putting hot glue on things and you're messing with stuff and leads and bending them and things, things happen. It's always better to know that your LED doesn't work before you put the entire thing together than after. And so here, after uh, the texture is dried on top of the foam, we're going to cut out carefully uh, the foam around it to see if we can get as close as we can to that edge of our printed texture piece. Don't worry if you're a little off, we're going to fix that in a little bit. We're just going to use this Sharpie, uh, black Sharpie, and this will hide if there's any of that white foam kind of hanging out. It'll just look like a dark section of the, the bar. And this is also going to help hide the seam between the accent piece we're going to put around the edge of the bar there. Here we're going to cut this strip out. You'll notice like there's a lightish band between each one of these kind of strips. That's where you're intended to cut. And that's basically so you don't have any white edge on the paper. So you're, you're, you're intended, you're, you're supposed to cut through that lighter band in between each one of these strips. This way, if you're a little off of your cut, it doesn't matter because you'll still have non-white paper showing. And uh, those glue sticks, by the way, that I'm using, those are also from the Dollar Tree. Uh, you get 10 of those glue sticks for a buck. That's really a heck of a deal. They're not super high quality, but for this kind of work, they're, they're perfectly fine. And then we're just gonna adhere that strip carefully around the outside edge. It is easy to tear it, so just be careful with it. And glue sticks are definitely the way to go for this. You don't want to use a wet glue like PVA glue or Elmer's because the minute you make this paper wet, uh, it starts doing funky things. It gets really, really delicate. Uh, your ink might even run. So yeah, definitely use glue sticks for this. Don't use uh, a liquid glue. And once we've got this on the, the sides, the two sides on the front, we're just going to trim it off. And then we're going to put another piece on the back. And we're going to let that overlap on the middle of those sides of the bar because you won't see that bit anyway. So you won't see any seams. So there I'm putting a little bit on the sides and adding the, the strip. And before I put it on there, I want to trim it to size. So when I 
fold it over, it'll be just in the right place. And it'll be on that section of the sides of the bar that'll be covered up by the actual Torino tile itself. And there we go. And we'll paint the bottom, so don't worry about that. And I'm gonna start positioning my lanterns. Now the cartridges are gonna live in the tongue piece of the Torino tile. And I'm gonna start uh, making the pockets for those about an inch in from either side of the opening. And then I'm here, I'm tracing in the pockets uh, the cartridges rather for the, the lights themselves. So now I'm just cutting out the interior tongue piece to make room for that battery cartridge. Um, just want to kind of be gentle with this. You want to make sure you do not cut through that exterior wall piece. So take your time with it and, and try it out and don't force it. Now you have the both pockets cut out and just want to test fit them real quick. Make sure everything works in there. Uh, looks pretty good. And then it's time to work on the lanterns themselves. Now these lanterns are basically made of some, they're made of some very basic materials. Uh, this the LED, some masking tape, a little bit of paper, and a bead from the uh, Game Beer Master online store. Um, but you don't need the bead necessarily. I just did it to make it look like the LED portion of it was more bulbous and bigger, but it's not a requirement for this. You can literally just leave the LED uncovered and then put the top on it. This little round black top we're gonna do with a little bit of hot glue. I made an eighth inch strip of masking tape and I'm gonna use this to make the base of the lantern. There you go. And you just do the same for the other one. Then I grabbed a piece of scrap, uh, of scrap paper and I'm just gonna color that black with a Sharpie. Now we're going to use this for the top of the hood of the lanterns. So this is just a piece of paper with some Sharpie on it. And then we're going to use the bead to uh, trace out a circle on it. So it'll match up perfectly with the bead itself. Now, if you were doing this without the bead, then you would use the LED to trace out the, the circular part here. And we're just going to take a pair of scissors to cut these out. Now, just keep in mind when you're cutting small things out like this with scissors, you don't want to be moving the scissors, you want to be moving the paper. So you'll notice what I'm doing here when I cut these out is I'm actually rolling the paper into the blade. And this gives me very exact and very good control over the paper and also the cutting speed. So keep that in mind, it's a good trick for when you're cutting little delicate parts like this. Then I got a piece of scrap foam because I want to stick these lanterns and uh, LEDs to stick up uh, vertically because I'm now going to use some hot glue to add those beads to the top of the LED. And I'm going to do that by putting a little dab of hot glue in, on top of each one and that's going to flow down into it and, and adhere the two parts together. And also before that hot glue is totally dry, I'm actually gonna add that top little round dot that we made. If you don't have tweezers, uh, you can actually stick it on the end of one of the push pins that you're gonna use for the cartridges. And just take any hot glue that may have seeped out. Just make sure you get rid of that before it totally dries.
And then we're going to color that base uh, with our handy Sharpie. You can also paint these if you want to have them a different color. I, I just like the black and I also really like Sharpies because you draw it on and it's dry in seconds. So you can keep going. And it's always a good idea after you put hot glue on an LED to test it and make sure that it still works. So I tested both and they did indeed. Now I'm using a thin Sharpie pen here to add a little bit more uh, detail to the bulb glass part of the lantern. Um, just to look like, you know, it's got the some kind of frame built around it. Uh, this is optional if you don't have the Sharpie, um, but it does add a little bit of nice detail. Then it's time to uh, actually attach the bar part to the Trano tile piece. And we got to notch out a little bit on the sides to make a little bit of room for it. And just be careful with these cuts because while the foam uh, is, is unpainted like this, it is pretty delicate. Once we put on our paint water glue mixture, it'll be a lot stronger, but right now you have to be pretty careful with it. A little test fit to see how that looks. There you go. One bar almost ready for business. And a little tack of hot glue on each side. And we're going to make it flush to that back, by the way. I did flush to the back like this because I wanted to make sure that if you had a fig back there, I, I, I thought that would be most likely behind the bar, there would be less room than in front of the bar. So I wanted to have nothing that could obstruct a mini back there. Uh, on the front of the bar, I didn't, didn't mind so much because that's going to open up into the, a larger room, presumably. So here I'm putting the holes in for the leads for the LED to go through. This is the cartridge that's, that holds the batteries. And you'll notice I put the holes right in the middle of the spine of that cartridge. Now here I'm just test fitting the leads to make sure they go through smoothly. And here I'm gonna use it to also just kind of test fit the battery and everything before I put everything together. Now I'm gonna put the battery in there too to make the final part of the battery cartridge, which is the masking tape around the outside that holds it in place. So here I'm sticking the needle through one of the holes that I already made because I'm going to use this to punch the hole for the leads through the bar. And I'm going to use the pocket that we made and this cartridge to make sure that those holes line up perfectly. So I put the cartridge in the pocket and then use that to position the needle to go up through the uh, bar. There you go. And now I'm going to put in the other hole and do the same thing. So in this way, I know when I pass that LED or the leads from the LED through, they're going to marry up perfectly with my battery cartridge. Otherwise, it can be a real pain in the neck. And the great thing with this technique is that those holes are so small that you'll never see them. And they're also going to be covered up by the base of our lantern. Uh, so it's great. It's a very smooth, very slick kind of look to it. And here I'm marking uh, the cartridge that goes with that one because now that I've punched them with holes in them, uh, it's important to make sure that you put the same one back in the same pocket. And here I did the same thing with the needle um, on the other lantern on the other side. And here I'm just positioning the cartridges in there for the last time. Uh, we're going to leave them in there from now on. And then it's just time to, if there's excess leads hanging out on the bottom there, we're going to bend those up and over the outside of the battery cartridge to uh, get, get them out of the way a little bit for the next step. And again, I'm just testing the batteries. It, it's always a good thing to test those LEDs and batteries. 
That's looking pretty good. So here I'm taking a little pair of needle nose pliers and there's a little piece sticking out there that I'm going to bend over and make sure that that's uh, going to be kind of bent and flush with the, tip with the cartridge itself. And now I'm going to use some little bits of masking tape. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting it just slightly inside that cartridge. And it's basically these little pieces of masking tape are going to stick each lead to the side of the cartridge. So it's basically this way you're sure that when you put a battery in, you're gonna be between the two leads. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Again, these pieces of masking tape adhere the, the leads to the sides of the cartridge. It basically holds them apart. So when you put the battery in, the battery will be, be in the correct position between the two leads. Here I'm just using the battery to flatten down that piece of masking tape that's covering up the one lead. Now remember, you don't want to put this masking tape all the way down into the cartridge because then you'll cover up the lead and it won't make contact with the battery. You just want it right on the edge there. And then just use the battery to smooth them down and to get them in position. And confirm that your lanterns still work um, because if you went too far in, you'll know right away because your lanterns won't light up. Yep, there you go, looks pretty good. So now it's time to put that other exterior piece on. Uh, here I'm gonna cut off the bottom of it completely because we are going to use a piece of wood texture down there instead to cover up those cartridge uh, cartridges for the uh, batteries and to make it a little, you know, look a little better down there. And it's just time to glue it in place. And I also took the time, the opportunity to give a little dab of glue on those cartridges because I want to make sure they didn't move while I was doing all this kind of stuff. Now this little foam piece that we cut off of this exterior piece, we're gonna use that as a template. So hold on to that. And here's another piece of texture, that wood texture. This is in the Trino tech manual. Uh, there's several of these wood textures in there and I'm gonna use this as a front kind of kick plate underneath the, uh, the bar. This is gonna give it a nice added free detail and it'll cover up those battery cartridges and all that kind of messiness underneath there. So here I'm tracing using the piece of foam that we cut off the exterior wall. And then it's just a matter of cutting out with some scissors. There you go. And then just hot glue it in place. And I actually use the piece of foam that we use for the template to push it down because this can get pretty hot because of the hot glue. But this way you're sure you won't hurt yourself. Then we're gonna start drawing in some details. This is the same type of pattern that I've done on all the Torino Tavern pieces, wood beams with some bolts in them. Um, I'm just gonna put in the lines for the beams right now because I need to know where they are for doing the back kick plate. Um, so yeah, I'm just drawing the verticals here because that way I can kind of tell exactly where the back wood texture needs to be. And we're gonna use another one of those textures from the Torino Tech Manual. Um, here I'm putting on the glue stick glue. And I want to make sure I don't get it on the decorative piece on the bar there. I just want to get it on the foam below it. Because what I'm doing is I'm putting this decorative wood piece on there and I want it to marry right up to the bottom of that bar. This hides a lot of sins, uh, like bad seams, little imperfections in the foam. I'm cutting this along the line that I drew for the vertical beam.
Now I need to find out where this texture piece meets the bottom of the bar piece. So I'm gonna use this mechanical pencil with no lead taken out to just give me a ridge and to highlight that ridge in between uh, where, the where the bottom of the bar ends and this texture needs to begin. And then I'm gonna cut that right on that line uh, with a very sharp uh, utility knife blade. You notice I'm actually pulling the piece, not the blade. This is also another way to kind of keep uh, very accurate with that cut. And then it's just a matter of taking off the excess. And trimming off the excess on the bottom too. All that's left to do is to do the wood grain on everything and put the bolts in. And then uh, once we're done with the texturing, it's just a matter of painting up anything that's white, making sure not to paint inside the battery compartments. And also make sure you take out the batteries before you start the painting because you do not want to get paint on your batteries. And once this is dry, it's ready to use. So if you haven't already, you can get started right now on your Torino journey by downloading the Torino construction manuals at GameGearMaster.com. They are consistently rated five stars and come with a 14 day hassle-free money back guarantee. That means if Torino's not for you, no problem. You'll get your money back, no questions asked. Happy crafting. And a big thank you to my supporters on patreon.com forward slash gamegearmaster and a shout out to the architects on there who really go above and beyond. Brian Yao and William Dellinger, thank you so much and apologies if I mispronounced your names. If you'd like to become a patron and get exclusive Trino products, go to patreon.com forward slash gamegearmaster.